Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Diachronic and today we're going to be taking a look at a bit of a different type of video. It's going to be about PAX East 2020. Now I did not actually go to PAX East 2020, but my co-host Caboose did go cover everything that went on in the event and this video is going to be a showcase of just that. If you haven't heard of Caboose before, he heads up the Twitch side of our channel, so you can check in the link in the description down below to check out a lot of our Twitch streams. We co-host on that thing, so you see some Destiny stuff from me and you see some variety games from him. Anyways, without further ado, I'm going to let him take over and showcase what happened at PAX. Thank you, Diachronic. Hi, everybody. Caboose.exe here. I hope you're all doing well. And today, as Diachronic said, we're going to be talking about my experience at PAX East 2020. My significant other and I had a lot of fun in Boston. There was a lot to do at PAX East. There were so many things. So let's not waste any more time and just get right into it. I never know how to start these things. <laughs> You know, it's just different. No, okay, well, well, anyway, so finally, we're at, we're at PAX East. This is my second time going, so PAX East 2020, Sony is not here, still. Um, Square Enix looks like it's got a booth. Uh, so our first goal, so what is our first goal? What are we doing? Where are we going? Well, we're getting breakfast. No, oh, we're getting breakfast, that's correct. We're getting breakfast at the Behemoth booth. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to be in the tournament for Soul Calibur 6 at, like, 10.30. I got to be there at the PAX Arena. So... Hopefully, I win. I've been practicing, but the uh, what is it? But we got Man Eater. We got to go to. That's basically the only appointment we have. So we're just gonna be wandering around here. So let's uh, hopefully we we'll get into some snacks. Oh, is that a banana? That man was carrying. A, that banana was carrying a banana. I want that banana. Now, once they let us in, you know, me and Nate, as press on behalf of Dichronic, we decided to just, you know, descend into the pit. And that's really what you're doing. You descend into back. You're here in this amazing area, this big, this big hall full of people trying to show you their games that are coming out. And it's so much fun. I'm not, and I, I want to say this is my first time doing one of these vlogs. Please let me know how I did. I apologize for not too interesting. Now, what is interesting are the booths themselves. Some of these people go above and beyond just designing these cool boots, like this one right here. This is the Fuser booth. They had this big statue where you can take a picture right in front of it. They'll even launch fireworks for you. It's, it was so cool. One of my favorite booths is coming up right here, and it's not the Astro booth on the left here, which we are currently sponsored by. Let's just, you know, plug that in while we have it. <laughs> uh, no, it is this booth right here, the Baldur's Gate booth, all right? This game is to advertise Baldur's Gate. That's what this booth is for. It is just a castle. Look at this thing. Look how cool it is. I mean, just, I just love it. One of the most unique booths to just... Uh, any con I've ever been to in general would have to be Tiny Builds. They had a whole carnival where you could go and play their games. Once you played their game, you would get a token and you could use those tokens to buy their merch. They also had a claw machine to get some stuffies, as well as a test your strength machine. <laughs> Now I know it's not right to ever shoot vertical, but sometimes you have to. And let me tell you, I am gonna practice for next time because that carnival will be back for PAX West. They told me themselves. As always though, Nintendo has a super nice boot. Now I'm not saying it was the best one, but for Animal Crossing, this was a really, really nice booth. You were able to take pictures in like nice little areas, like you can take it where you're fishing or in front of a campfire or with Tom frickin' Nook. Like how awesome is that? That that Tanuki taught me what that was at a young impressionable age. Truly, he is everyone's teacher. Speaking of Animal Crossing, which is coming out March 20th, 2020, so is Doom Eternal and Bethesda decided to host another Game Days right next to the convention. Right next door in the West End, they had Bethesda Game Days and they were showing off Doom Eternal, which I got to play and let me tell you, oh my God, mwah. I can't show you any footage legally though. Besides playing Doom Eternal, which would be the peak of my stay at Bethesda Game Days, and the other one would be that I got to meet the YouTuber Midnight. Super nice guy, by the way. I also got to meet Pete. He was super nice and he answered my question as to why Doom 64 hadn't gotten a re-release until recently. 
Being able to just chit chat with the Bethesda staff is was so nice and refreshing. It's always cool to just kind of have casual conversations with these game developers. Whether they be major or indie, which PAX is by the way, a great place to go if you're into the indie scene. Everyone there is so friendly. They just want you to play their game and have a good time. For instance, here's Latch from the Berserk Studios, the people who made just shapes and beats. Now the person in the previous picture who's wearing that blue jumpsuit is one of the main minds behind Deliver Us The Moon, which is actually one of the games that I'm planning on streaming for quite some time now. It's getting a console port real soon. So I figured what better time to go ahead and stream it. It's gonna be like a story driven atmospheric puzzle game. Now Deliver Us The Moon was located in the Wired Productions booth. Other games that were there were The Falconeer, Avicii, and Vector, which was being worked on closely by the artist before they passed away. There was also the game called Those Who Remain, which really caught my attention. Those Who Remain is another atmospheric puzzle game. However, this one is more horror related. If you're a fan of Alan Wake, then you're gonna like this game. Light plays an important factor and a lot of the shadowy figures that can't go into light in the demo, you're trying to get out of the town while you're being stalked by these shadowy figures. Now, while it isn't all in your face horror, it's more subtle, which is something that I personally prefer. So when the game comes out, you bet I'm gonna be streaming it. And another game with shadowy figures is Sky Hill Black Mist. This game is a sequel to Sky Hill, which is a game where you're trying to get out of a skyscraper. This time, however, you were trying to go into the skyscraper to find your daughter. Sky Hill was located in the Polish booth, a place that I always find myself going to at every PAX. Every developer at the booth is always so nice and welcoming. On top of that, their games are always fun to play. They have a different feel to them compared to most other indie games. For instance, Sky Hill is an isometric stealth game. You'll have to watch out for traps as well as patrolling enemies. If you want to kill anybody, you're basically going to have to sneak up on them. Ammo is very limited and guns are really loud and you want to stay as quiet as possible. Another game we played there was Help Will Come Tomorrow. It's a game where you have to manage four people trying to survive after their train got attacked by terrorists. Not only do you have to manage their resources, but also their relationship. The four of them will have different ideologies, so you have to kind of make them see more eye to eye and mend their relationships amongst each other in order for them to survive. Or at least improve their chances of survival. If you like games like Frostpunk, then this is right up your alley. The game is not out yet, but I would recommend keeping a close eye on it. Now, I don't know if it classifies as indie, but Misfits was one of the games that really stood out to me. It's a PvP game where you play as like an action figure head when you look for a body. Once you find a body, the body has like special moves. Like one of them has like a, like a grabbo arm and one of them's like a, like a teddy bear body. I don't know, it was a lot of fun to play, but one thing that really stood out to me was the level of customization you have in the game when it comes to making maps and game modes. Now the guy here on screen is just one of the art guys and he was super passionate about the game, just explaining the level of detail you can go to and it is insane. There are like stuff like switches and item stats. Like you can make an item super large, have like no health, but do like massive damage. Like it was insane the level of customization you can do there. I'm really excited to give the game a try and we'll probably get some people together and stream it. If you want to join in for that stream, here's a here's our schedule on screen here. You can also find that on our Discord and a link to that will be in the description. If you haven't joined our Discord, then what are you waiting for? Get in there and check out Dichronix and amazing spreadsheets. One game that I was super excited to finally be able to play was GTFO. Being a big Payday 2 fan, I knew this game was already out in early access. The only problem was I just didn't have anybody to play it with. But now that I've met the devs and finally got to play it, I really like it. And on top of that, they're gonna give us some coats so that way we can stream the game. I can get a group of people and we can stream it. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. You're gonna see some primal caboose coming out there. Just gonna be here a lot of ah, woo, and a lot of ah, and a lot of ah, woo, woo. Although for some reason they had barf bags. I don't know why they were there. I mean, they didn't even really know why they were there, I, I think. I mean, like, why do you need barf bags for this game? Now you might have noticed that I am wearing a shark onesie. That is because it is tradition for Dichronic and I to wear these shark onesies. Every time we go to a con, we wear it one day while we are there. And there's no better time to celebrate sharks than this PAX because we can finally play Maneater. The people who brought us Killing Floor and Killing Floor 2 Tripwire has finally showed off Maneater for the general public to play. And let me tell you, I was not disappointed. I've been waiting for this game for quite some time. And I honestly, I had a lot of fun playing it. I am super excited for a game where I play as a shark. A shark that is capable of using their tail to launch sea turtles into fishing boats. That is 
So much fun to do, by the way. I'm super excited to actually play the full release when it comes out. It was a lot of fun to play. I have one last video game to show you, and that is Sniper Elite VR. I figured I had to do at least one VR game while I was there. And I was not disappointed with how the game works. Scopes are very realistic in this VR setting. On top of that, the way you move is super nice. You get to pick which movement system in VR that you like to use. Most games just kind of force you to use the one that they have. It was nice to have a choice. Now you might be wondering, Caboose, is there anything other than video games at PAX? And the answer is yes, there is a whole tabletop section that you can explore. I believe that tabletop area is even open after 6 p.m. when the rest of the show floor closes. So once you're done with all the video games, you can go there. And we actually played a game there called Buy the Vote, which is a lot of fun to play. It's a 15 minute long game where you try to buy states votes. Very, very current, I guess, but let's not get political now. It was a lot of fun to play. It's a quick 15 minute game, and I mean, the game can only be 15 minutes long. You literally start a 15 minute timer at the beginning and then you just go until the timer runs out. It's, it's nice and it's a lot of fun to play. Now there's probably something that's been on your mind for this entire video, and well, that's the coronavirus. You're probably wondering, how are they holding this convention where thousands of people go to and, and I'm not getting sick? I didn't come out of there sick at all. I mean, Sony dropped out because of the coronavirus. So why were they still holding it? Well, that's because everywhere we went, there was hand sanitizer and Clorox wipe at the top and bottom of every escalator at every booth. People were constantly wiping down equipment with Clorox and washing their hands with hand sanitizer. In fact, there were people stationed at the bottom of every escalator just to wipe the handrail down with Clorox. It was probably the cleanest con I have ever been to. I've gone to Comic-Con, WonderCon, Kamikaze, PAX East, PAX West, PAX South. This PAX was the time where like, why weren't people doing this from the beginning? I honestly hope that this concern for like cleanliness in terms of like the Clorox wipes and the hand sanitizers stays around. So I want to end this video with a cosplay montage, but there's one last thing that I would like to do. And that's give a shout out to PAX for letting us go there and just kind of socialize with everyone and try out all these games. Specifically, thank you for letting me participate in the PAX Arena in the Soul Calibur 6 tournament. That was such a mom momentous occasion, a momentous occasion in my life. I've never got to be on stage in a tournament before. I mean, granted, I only came, I came in seventh, all right? I, it wasn't anything spectacular, but it was so cool just to compete. All right, so we're done with the tournament. I, uh, I lost in my second game, but the guy who beat me went on to be second place. So I'm not too mad. I, uh, they, they put me, my rank is officially seventh. I'm seventh place. Honestly, well, I'm, not, I'm not too mad, it's a lucky number. So they gave me this nice swag bag, which would have came with um, Zenny optical glasses. However, due to uh, someone liking too much Corona, they, their factories are shut down. So I didn't get those. So let's see what else we got. So we got these, we got these, uh, he, him, they, their, she, her pins, which we already used two of them. We also got a, looks like a PAX pop grip, which I feel like I should use these, but I don't know why I'm, I'm like always hesitant to use them. Looks like we got a, a lunch box. It says, uh, he's got the PAX 2020 logo, which I always think looks really cool. And the, what is that, comfy? I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, it's All right, and I do not know what that means. Uh, we'll open that in a second, but we also have uh, a bunch of patches. Let's see here. Oh, whoa, whoa, what is? Let's see here. Perfect. So we also have a, what looks like a really nice scarf. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's really perfect in California where it is a consistent like 70 degrees year round. Now I liked everything I got out of that bag. However, that scarf was a lifesaver because of how windy it was in Boston. Oh man, it was 
was so much fun. Hopefully, I'll be able to participate in the next tournament at PAX West. If not me, you'll have your regular host die chronically on stage. And if, if that's the case, we will let you know so you can, you can go and watch the stream and cheer him on. Come on! I want to give a special shout out to everyone at PAX, all the enforcers, all the security, the people who set up, and all the people who run the boots, all the devs, and all the PR people, everybody that helps make PAX such a friendly and welcoming and just nice warm place that I can go every time and love it every time. I don't, th that, that sounded better in my head the way I phrased it. Basically, I'm just saying that I, I love PAX. PAX is great. I, I usually go to West, but this time at East, I had to go and I, I loved it. I hope I get to go to PAX every year until I die or, I mean, because I'm hoping that it, it never goes away. It's, it's, a, it's an experience that I think every gamer should go to. Anybody, if you love games, you should go to PAX. Do yourself a favor and go to PAX. My sp specifically East or West. Those are my two top, my two, the two best conventions that you can go to year round, in my opinion. Now, if you've gone to PAX, please let me know what your favorite aspect of PAX is in the comments. I'll be checking back periodically to see what you guys posted because I love to hear what your opinion is. Hopefully you'll be able to attend PAX and we'll be able to see you there. It's always nice to meet a viewer. Well, that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Caboose.exe and I hope to see you soon. And remember... Hello!